Hello all. In this video, we are to see the working of refrigerator. Before going to that, let us see some more fundamentals. Looking at heat engine. In a system, heat flows from a hot body to a cold body. Meanwhile, it is likely to generate mechanical work from the energy flow. The positive thing what we get from this is, this system can be reversed. That is, when we supply work to the system, we are able to transfer heat from a cold body to a hot body. This is what the need is. In refrigeration, we have seen that we need to transfer heat from an object to a hotter region. It is not just in refrigeration. Even in another case, we do the same process. Let us see. In refrigeration, we confine an object, confine the space, we maintain a temperature lesser than atmosphere. So we take heat from a place and we extract it to the we extract from a place and we give it to the atmosphere. So considering this space, we take heat from this one and we give it to the atmosphere. So this is the source. Here is where the heat is extracted and in the atmosphere it is given. Let us consider, for example, here we have the source at minus 10 degrees centigrade and the atmosphere at 30 degrees centigrade. So here the heat is taken from this and it is given to that one. So don't get confused when we have minus 10 degree, still it has heat. It is degree centigrade. The unit for measuring temperature what we use is degree centigrade. It is not actually absolute zero. In absolute zero, we may not find heat. That is minus 273.15 degrees centigrade. That is given with zero Kelvin, another way of measuring the temperature. So here, this is actually uh, set based on the freezing point of water at atmospheric conditions. At atmospheric conditions, water freezes at 0 degree centigrade. So they have set that as 0. If you consider Fahrenheit, it considered another temperature, an arbitrary temperature to be a 0 mark. So don't get confused with this one. Okay. Even at this temperature, it has heat. So this heat is extracted and it is given to the atmosphere. Meanwhile, there is another one thing called heat pump. In this case, we have a cold atmosphere and an object. Here, if it is hot, the flow will be from this one to this one. But what we do, we create the flow of heat from a cold atmosphere to the hot body. For example, let us consider the cold atmosphere, let us consider it to be a, a winter condition. So here it is 5 degrees centigrade and we need to have a place at 20 degrees centigrade. So usually the flow should be from this direction, but we create the flow from here to here. Okay, this condition is achieved and this is what is used in winter air conditioning. So in both the cases we see that the flow is from a cold region to a hotter region. So this is possible with the help of a refrigerant. Okay, so in this case, the refrigerant does not go out of the system. It is well within the system. So in order to achieve that, we need to have a cyclic process. Let us see about thermodynamic cycles. It is a sequence of processes where transfer of heat and work is done involving temperature and pressure. Making the medium return to initial state. Thereby, we are able to create a cyclic process. There are various thermodynamic cycles. Based on these thermodynamic cycles, we have created refrigeration systems. Certain refrigeration systems are made based on particular heat pump cycle or refrigeration cycle. Okay, here we have some refrigeration systems. Let us see some of those. Gas refrigeration system. Actually, it runs in reverse Brayton cycle or else we can also say it as bell Coleman cycle. In this, the refrigerant what we use is air. So, it is also termed as air refrigeration system. In this case, the air is compressed and it expands. So, in this case, we use heat exchangers and we use air to refrigerate. In fact, we don't use this much. This is used in gas turbine powered aircrafts where they generate compressed air and that air is used for refrigeration purpose. But in a normal condition, in our case, we don't use this 
uh, in a domestic or industrial applications. Whereas we use the other systems as vapor compression and vapor absorption refrigeration system. We will look at that one continuously. Here we go with vapor compression refrigeration system. In fact, this refrigeration system is most widely used in uh, domestic and commercial purposes. As in the name, it says that the refrigerant what we use is a vapor. It means that the refrigerant can be in two different phases, liquid and gas at room temperature with the influence of different pressure. So here we have a TS diagram, temperature entropy diagram, where the phase diagram is shown. Here this is saturated liquid and here it is saturated vapor and this region it is liquid plus vapor. So we look at the phase change of our refrigerant. If we consider from here, A to B is actually evaporation process. It moves from liquid vapor to saturated vapor. Then here we have a isentropic compression process. And here it goes to superheated. It gets superheated. And then in a constant pressure process, it goes back to liquid phase. Then again in expansion process, from liquid to liquid plus vapor region. So it comes back to the initial position. In this way, the cyclic process continues. We will be able to understand the working of the refrigeration system with the help of the layout. Here we have, this is the point A. Here is where we are, the point A. And in particular, this is the evaporator where we need to maintain the particular temperature. That, is, that means our refrigeration should be done in this particular region. So this is the evaporator. Here the ref, uh, liquid plus vapor refrigerant enters and it takes the heat from this region. The refrigerant extracts the heat in this region and what happens? The refrigerant just changes its phase. Initially, once when it enters into the evaporator, it is in low pressure, low temperature form and it extracts heat and it changes its phase and it completely becomes low pressure, low temperature vapor. So the evaporation is done in this case and then this refrigerant moves on to a compressor where it is compressed, it is continuously compressed and it becomes high pressure, high temperature vapor. The vapor is compressed and it becomes high pressure, high temperature vapor. And now we need to condense this. In order to condense this, we circulate this in a condenser where we can flow atmospheric air to cool it. So what happens? The temperature comes down. The temperature comes down. And meanwhile, the vapor form of the refrigerant will get converted to liquid. So here, we will be able to get high pressure, low temperature liquid. Earlier it was vapor at high pressure, high temperature. Now the temperature comes down and also the phase changes. So here it was vapor and now here it has become liquid. After the condenser, it has changed to liquid. Now it gets collected to a reservoir and then from there on it comes to an expansion wall. In the expansion wall, the pressure gets reduced. The pressure gets reduced and in this process, some portion of the refrigerant gets converted to vapor. That's why high pressure, low temperature liquid changes to low pressure, low temperature liquid plus vapor. And now here we enter into the evaporator. By this way, the cycle completes. And so on, it continues, the process continues, process continues, it goes on this way, it goes on this way. By this way, the evaporator gets cooled or the heat from the evaporator is extracted from the refrigerant. The refrigerant changes its phase and it continues to work with this refrigeration system. And meanwhile, here we have a uh, condenser where the cooling can even be done with the help of water. Even uh, water can be used or else uh, air can be blown to take off the heat and to condense the refrigerant. Now this is how the working of a vapor compression refrigeration system is. Meanwhile, the refrigerator what we use at our house 
is also working on this condition. So let us compare this and we will be able to understand more about. So here we see a domestic refrigerator. Here we have uh, the freezer compartment. Here we have the other uh, racks where we store food and here we have a um, compartment where usually we used to store uh, vegetables. So here we have uh, x-ray type view where we have this freezer. This freezer compartment is actually the evaporator. This region is actually this one. So from A to B, that means A to B here, in this region, the freezer compartment is actually the evaporator. In that particular place, the heat gets extracted. So our refrigerant pass around this, pass around this, and it takes the heat from this. In our refrigerator, we have, we used to store our uh, food products, which is covered by air. This air makes contact with the evaporator tubes. So that what happened? The heat from the air is taken off, taken off by the refrigerant, which passes through the evaporator. So that it will get, the liquid refrigerant will get converted to vapor and it goes back to a compressor. Usually we have an electric run compressor, reciprocating type compressor. We can see it on the rear side of the refrigerator at the bottom end. We can see it. So here we have uh, electric operated reciprocating compressor. And what happened at this from B to C, here we know that in this process, the pressure and temperature of the vapor refrigerant will get increased. And once when it comes out, it goes to a grill that is usually held behind the refrigerator where it gets condensed. The vapor, uh, the refrigerant in vapor form gets condensed to liquid form. Usually earlier we had this type of condensers behind the refrigerators but at the modern refrigerators what we see at our house we may not be able to see this one. What, what have they done? They have made it like a, a radiator kind of thing and they use a fan so that they blow air, blow air to uh, do the same process. Earlier they used it by natural convection, now they do it with a forced convection. Now in this case the vapor which converted to liquid form comes out and here we have a spring like coil which is actually a minute tube which is having a diameter of around 0 0.6 millimeter. Imagine just like our micro tip lead what we have it is of 0 0.6 millimeter tube. Once when this condensed refrigerant passes through this one it reduces its uh, pressure. Meanwhile it loses its temperature and it goes up towards the evaporator. So by this way our cycle continues. So it goes on this way and then it comes down to the compressor. Once when it is compressed it goes to the condenser. Then it comes back to the expansion wall. Then again it goes to the evaporator. The same process continues. And in another, uh, in our refrigerator, we must look at this one. If we have a single door refrigerator, we usually have the freezer compartment at the top. And we extract heat from this freezer compartment alone. And from the rest of the places, when this air which is held inside becomes uh, hotter in comparison to the air which is present in the freezer, will go up. Automatically, there will be a natural circulation going on. And that is why we usually have this freezer compartment at the top of the uh, refrigerator. So this is how our domestic refrigerator works. And so we are able to understand about the vapor compression refrigeration system. And we have another one that is called vapor absorption refrigeration system that we will look at in the upcoming video. Thank you.